Okay, in this lecture, I'm going to talk a little bit about electric field and its calculations with the equations. Um, so really briefly, let me just show you what an electric field looks like. So what an electric field does or is, is the space around a charge is altered such that if we put another charge, let's say a positive charge in the field, it's going to create a force on that system. So we say that the charge produces a field. And if you notice, if I move the charge, you can see how the field or the the space around it kind of changes like this. So that's what we're modeling here is the fact that this charge actually changes space around it. This is called a vector field um, which shows the direction and magnitude more or less of the electric field uh, within respect to this charge. Now it's the electric field it's much stronger right here which is the red color and then you can see it kind of gets to blue which means it's, you know less um, you have less strength right here. So the closer you are, the stronger it is, and the further away, the weaker you are. And of course, if you have more charge, um, you'll have more electric field, so it'll get redder. Um, we also have electric field lines. So this kind of does the same thing um, in that if you put a positive charge out here, it would be pushed away. So notice that all the arrows are away from the positive charge, because if we put another positive charge out here, it would always be away. So... Um, what I want to do is shift click, so shift click to delete it. Now if we look at a negative charge, there you go. Notice that all the arrows are in because an, a positive charge would always flow inward. And same thing here, you see that how the arrows are inward. So what we're going to do is calculate the strength of this field. Um, and it depends on, of course, the size of your charge and how far away you are. So let's do that. So there's two ways. One way you can calculate this is using this equation. The electric field is defined as how much force a charge feels. So imagine you have a charge right here and you know the value of the force, like it, you, it's being pushed and you have that. The question is, what is the strength of the electric field? So if you notice the units for this, this is how much force per charge. So more or less a ratio of, of force and charge on your system is an electric field. Um, another way we can solve this is say you have a source charge, very much like I just had earlier. And just like I explained earlier, um, oops, sorry, let me move down a little bit. This is getting cut off a little bit, sorry, here, I'll move it, there we go. Is we know the value of the charge, that's what this Q is here, and we want to look at a point. So this is nothing here. Although we always, you know, just for directional sake, pretend it's positive at this point, but notice there's no charge here. But at a point away, how strong is it? And that's our k constant, 8.99, or rounded to the ninth, um, to the ninth newton meters coulombs, newtons meters squared over coulomb squared. Q is the strength of the charge, and R is how far away you are from the charge. So let's make two calculations um, to solve a system. So here's a sample problem right here. Let me um, just bring this back over here. Should be able to screen capture that. So just give me a moment while I try to do that. Or maybe not. Sorry, I know this is annoying. Annotate that screen. Come on. Perfect. All right, so let's solve the first way using the electric field as E equals Fe over Q. So this is really useful if you have these pieces of information already, like the amount of charge and the push. So let's uh, draw a diagram of this kind of situ uh, situation right here. The question is, what is, um, you know, linta, uh, get it, linta with the wool? Linta pulls our wool sweater overhead, which charges her body as the sweater rubs against her cotton shirt. What is the electric field at the location where a 1.6 to negative 19 piece of lint experiences a force of that much as it floats near her? What will happen if she touches the doorknob? So A, we have the charge. This happens to be a charge of an electron. But let's use this number as our Q. That's our charge. And we know the force, or the push on this. Like that. 
So, what is this? You know what's happening here? We have a charge. This loses stop. Let's pretend it's a charge, and it's feeling a positive push this way, like this. The question is, what is our E? You know what E is this experiencing here? So the E is going to be the force, which is going to be the 3.2 times 10 to the negative ninth newtons. And then we're going to divide it by the charge, just like we have right here. And so, 3.2 to the negative 19 divided by um, 1.6 to the negative 19. Um, actually, the charge at force is to the negative 9. So let me fix that. I get 2 times 10 to the negative 10, and the value will be newtons per coulomb, like that. So, the fact that this positive means that the electric field is actually in the same direction as this charged system. So that's what this positive means too. And notice that this was positive, this was all positive. So the direction of the electric field um, and the push are in the same direction like this. So that is uh, more or less how to solve a problem like this. Look at a point charge. So. Let's do two examples. First, let's do an example with just using this kind of setup. So I'm going to make up a problem right now. So imagine that you had a charge here. Let's say it's 3.2 times 10 to the excuse me, ninth coulombs. Let's say you have a charge right here. And you want to know the electric field at some point P that is 2 meters away. So when you have a system like this, when the charge is actually causing the field to change, we're going to use the electric field equation as this, kq over r squared. I notice there's only one q here. Uh, so electric field finds a field at a point away from a charge. So this is a e at point away from charge. Notice electric force, and I'm not trying to confuse you here, but is very similar, but a force involves two objects. So notice you have two charges here. So you need two charges to solve force, but electric field you just need one charge at a point away. So to avoid confusion, I will get rid of this for now. So let's solve for this. So electric field at point P will be as, as follows. So it's going to be our K constant, 8.99 positive 9 newtons meters squared over coulomb squared. Our charge, since we know the value, will be the 3.2 to the negative ninth coulombs. And then let's say we're 2 meters away. So we'll take that number and we're going to square it like that. So entering this into my calculator. get 7.192 newtons per coulomb, just like this. So that's the value of our electric field. Now, electric field is a vector, so I'll put this little symbol here to mean that, which means not only do we need this, but we need a direction here. And usually just drawing an arrow is usually appropriate. So we always pretend that this point right here is always positive, even though there's no actual charge here. We call that a test charge. And the test charge is always positive. So if I put a positive charge right here, and I have a positive charge right here, this thing's going to be pushed away like this. So my vector at this one location would look like that. It would be in a direct line away. So you could write the word away here. And that would be sufficient because that tells us that it is moving away. Now, if this were negative, it would move in toward. So the direction is away from the charge like that. And that's how you could solve electric field of a single point from a single charge here. In the next video, I'm going to show you what happens when we have something like this. If you have two charges, so say you have a charge here, but let's say you have a charge here. 
and I ask for the electric field at this point. Well, we're going to have two electric fields interacting. And since they're directional, um, the way they interact will be directional as well. So a quick analysis will say that the electric field from this guy over here, if we pretend this is positive, because we always do, we pretend that this is positive, and I'll call this Q1, I'll call this Q2, the electric field from Q1 would push it away. So E1 would look like this. Now this one will also push it away, but notice that it pushes away, again, away in a straight line, like this. So if you notice here, if we want to know what E total is, or what's the electric field at that point, we need to find the sum of these two. But we don't add them like this, because they're vectors, remember? So we need to add them as x components and y components. So E2x and E2y. To get our Ex total, etc. So the same process that we're going to do, or we did for Coulomb's law, we'll do for electric field like that. So let me stop this video and do the next problem.